Hey, um, so this is my first video doing a voiceover. I just got, I think it was CapCut on my PC, and uh, I've had this gameplay clip of Destiny 2 and on my hard drive for about a week now. Um, I have... I've learned something that I think is very important lately. Um, I've seen a movie called the, How called the House on Netflix and had a talk with my mom and watched uh, an episode of Therapy get listened to an episode of Therapy Gecko on Spotify and it, it all kind of made me realize something that uh, I should be appreciating what I have in my life and what's in front of me. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Like, um, so, in the movie The House, it's um, a stop motion animation by, oh, I can't remember what studio made it. Um, stop motion animation, it's three act structure. Each act is a different alternate universe, I guess. Um, and every, all three of those universes, they have something in common, which is the aforementioned house. Um, in the first universe, this British family who is poor um, gets an invitation from a renowned architect to let him build them a house and they can live in it. And they live in it because they are desperate to get out of their financial situation to live like rich people. And they are pressured to do that by their own extended family. Um, they take up this architect on his offer and live in the house. And it turns out as time goes on, the house is being expanded upon and built more of constantly growing every night while everyone is sleeping. And uh, the, par the two parents of uh, the children in the family slowly go insane. And eventually there's a, a house fire and the children escape and the parents die in the house fire. Um, it's, the whole movie, just in general, all three of the acts made me feel uneasy. I think in part because of the stop motion animation, but also because they made it look a little bit strange on purpose. Um, I think it's a really good thing because it made me think, okay, why is this weird beyond beyond the art style, what makes this so uncomfortable, and it was the rampant greed, I guess, and unsatisfaction of the 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 two parents. It hit a little bit close to home for me, because I've been feeling really unsatisfied and a little greedy uh, in, in my personal day-to-day -day life. I sure as shit don't want to end up like those guys. <laughs> Fucking tormentors. God, I hate these guys. Um, it's just very creepy and sad. Kind of like an old children's tale warning you to beware of certain things. Be wary. Um, the second act of the movie is about a, a mouse, or like a rat or something. Like in this universe, they're all like anthropomorphic rats. Um, and this guy, like the, it's still in England, there's a recession hitting everybody really hard. And this guy is trying to refurbish the, the house and like make it really fancy and, and uh, sell it. And because of the recession, you know, he had to get rid of his contracting team. And 
he had to get rid of his contracting team because of the recession and uh, decided to do it all himself. But he half-assed everything and started getting uh, pest problems in all the insulation and stuff in the house. Like, uh, kind of like bed bugs. Uh, I've, I've dealt with bed bugs before. It is. You kind of start to go insane after seeing them for long enough. You get scared, which is kind of what this the, this contractor rat does after you know half-assing everything, making sure it was bug and not making sure it was bug proof. Um, he goes and tries to kill them all, but doesn't do it right. He should have. He contemplates calling a professional pest control guy, but doesn't because it would save money, because he's a little greedy. Um, and anyway, he he, he, had, he hosts um, he hosts a house viewing party to try to sell it, you know, get people interested in this strange couple, one really fat guy and one really, really, really outrageously tall lady. They're both old. Um, as described in the subtitles, uh, they, they're like, we're very interested in this house. And some shenanigans occur, and, you know, they won't leave, they aren't paying for it. Um, eventually it turns out that they're all, uh, they invite their relatives over, and it turns out eventually that they're all just giant versions of the bugs that were infesting the house and the the rat contractor goes insane from his greed and half-assery and all the bugs and <laughs> he digs a, a tunnel uh, through the rotisserie chicken oven and becomes like a feral rat and loses himself and that that that's where that part of the movie ends the next, it, it, that one also hit very close to home. It's just like, you now it's really tempting to half-ass stuff and do it yourself and not get help and, you know, that really bit him in the ass. And on top of that, you know, him not making smart decisions. Oh, here comes the Tormentor again. His stupid decision to try to continue doing the contracting work in a recession, you know, his greed consuming him, his dissatisfaction with his life, um, bit, him, bit him in the ass and messed him up. That, it scares me. Um, the next part of the movie is about... Uh, a different, a different alternate universe again. This time it's about cats. There's three or four cats in this movie. Um, they're anthropomorphic. They are living in the house, but the entire countryside is flooded. So the house, which is on a hill, is like the only thing left. Everything else is like a lake, kind of. Um, one of the cats is a landlord and two other cats are uh, tenants in the house. The landlord cat is trying to fix up the house and earn money and stuff to, to completely repair it. And she's doing that by, you know, letting, letting people rent out some rooms. She wants to repair the house because she thinks it's really cool and wants to live in it herself after it's all repaired and finished. Um, and then, you know, the tenants are they're good people, but they don't pay her any money. Yeah, you know, they're all kind of stuck in financial positions. But um, the two tenants don't really value money as nearly as strongly as the, the landlord cat. And um, eventually things get worse. Um, there's some there's there's problems with the house like the pipes water getting muddy and rusty and turning brown and um another cat comes in and he's like a 
like a hippie kind of and starts trying to make a, a, a boat out of the the planks uh, on the floor in the house for one of the other tenants because he's been wanting to leave they all know about how the flood is getting worse and they wanted to leave and eventually they they leave but the landlord has a really difficult time letting it go um eventually it the house gets turned into like a, a floating boat and they kind of they all have a happy ending where they kind of sail away and go find other opportunities um and it really i don't i don't know how i feel about that I mean, I guess they're kind of just, she's letting go of what she thought she wanted. And it turns out to be the best thing for her, which kind of applies to me too. I don't know how, I can't really put it in the words. But just like... The idea of appreciating what's in front of me and letting go of my greed and my fear of failure, um, that's something I need to be doing with my life. Is this even, is this even good commentary? Like, I'm just, <laughs> this is my first ever voiceover. I'm trying something new. I'm trying something new. This is me getting over my fear of failure. Trying something new that I've always wanted. But an effective one. And the people of Neo will God damn, I fucking hate this tormentor. And there's that bastard. Anyway, I hope. You know, if you if you're watching this, please leave a comment. And I would that would be really cool. I'd, lo I'd love to start replying in the comments. Anyway. I hope this leads you to think about your life too. Um, I'll post more stuff. <laughs>